We're joined by Rich Goldberg. He's a senior advisor at the Foundation for the Defence of Democracies, the FDD. Thank you for joining us. So have the, all of the issues that held up the talks back in March been resolved? And if so, do you think the deal will be signed this time around? Well, the one piece that we had heard about uh, back in March that was stalling was Iran's request to remove the IRGC, that's the Revolutionary Guard Corps, Iran's terrorism paramilitary wing, uh, from the U.S. official terrorism list. That is a request that became very controversial in the Congress, and President Biden ultimately rejected that request. We understand that they have been working behind the scenes for weeks, if not months, to resolve that, uh, offer the Iranians workarounds through sanctions relief on the IRGC's top financiers, uh, other ways to assure them the, that the IRGC's economic presence inside the country would not be impacted uh, through these sanctions. Uh, so we, it remains to be seen whether the Iranians want the deal. They have an incredible deal on the table for themselves if they want to say yes. Uh, why has Qatar been chosen to host the talks, and, and does that change things? It is a strange turn of events uh, to have the Qataris be the host. Also, just coming uh, a couple weeks before the President of the United States uh, will visit Saudi Arabia, obviously there's been a long-term rift uh, between the Saudis, the Emiratis, and the Qataris. Now, some would say that rift has been closed. I think that there's still something there below the surface. But to go to Doha uh, to discuss uh, sanctions relief for the arch enemy uh, of the Saudis and the Emiratis who are plotting terrorist attacks daily against them is a bit awkward uh, for the Americans uh, to, to do that. Now, but remember, Doha has gone very close uh, to the Iranian regime over the last couple of years. Uh, they maintain relationships with everyone. They're sort of the Swiss bankers uh, of the Middle East at this point. Uh, the United States used Doha for contact with the Taliban for negotiations and now apparently relying on Qatar for relations with Iran. Well, you've said that a, an extraordinary deal is on the table uh, for Iran. Do we know how far the U.S. is prepared to go in terms of lifting sanctions and, and what it will mean in terms of concrete funding for Iran? What kind of a figure are we talking about here? Yeah, the deal that was on the table when talks broke down in March uh, is north of $100 billion up front to the Iranian regime and more than that on an annual basis in increased oil revenues. Uh, we're talking about all oil sanctions being lifted, uh, all uh, export sanctions, import sanctions, all the sector-based sanctions, and most importantly, all the terrorism and missile sanctions that are on Iran today on the Central Bank of Iran, the National Iranian Oil Company, and others would also be lifted. This would be a huge boon to the IRGC, and Iran would not have to take all the same restrictions it took under the old nuclear deal. They will get more sanctions relief and still be able to keep themselves right on the nuclear threshold by holding on to these advanced centrifuges that we've seen them using over the last two years. Now, of course, uh, the U.S. and Iran can't negotiate directly. The Europeans are acting as a mediator. Is this a reflection, perhaps, of how keen the Europeans are to get Iranian oil back on the market, a situation that is now, of course, uh, more critical given the, the situation with Russia? Yeah, listen, I think on the EU side, and we saw the EU foreign policy chief Burrell uh, broker this restart and talks, uh, there's no uh, surprise that they are desperate uh, to revive these talks. They are ideologically committed uh, to liking the Iranian regime and wanting to restore European ties with Iran. Uh, that does not necessarily mean that European powers themselves uh, believe that this is a good deal or are willing to go forward with it. We have seen the, the President Macron make these statements that he believes that we need Iranian oil and Venezuelan oil to help alleviate the oil market. That would be quite foolish, uh, not just from an oil market perspective, from a policy perspective as well, because Russia is a close ally of Iran and Venezuela. Lift the sanctions on Iran and Venezuela, Russia will just sweep in uh, to set up sanctions evasion hubs in both countries. So it will have a marginal impact on the price. Uh, but also will actually open up massive sanctions evasion for Moscow. Richard Goldberg at the FDD, thank you very much indeed for your insight and your analysis there.